We all know how Columbus came to the Americas with his three ships, but who did he find there? And how were the Spanish greeted? This is the story of the first contact between the Native American and the Spanish people and what followed after. The Caribbean, 1492. On October 11th, 1492, the Spanish were approaching the Bahamas from the northeast when they saw something interesting. Land was first seen by a sailor named Rodrigo de Triana. But Admiral Columbus, at 10 o'clock, saw a light, though he was uncertain that he could affirm it was land. Afterwards, Columbus claimed he saw the light once or twice more, like a wax candle rising and falling. It seemed to some to be an indication of land. Columbus had to make certain that land was close. Columbus asked and admonished the men to keep a good lookout on the forecastle and to watch well for land. He made a statement saying that a reward of a silk doublet, along with 10,000 maravedis promised by the sovereigns, would go to the first sailor to see land. At two hours after midnight, land was sighted at a distance of two leagues. Columbus ordered the three ships to halt and wait for daylight before going further. The next day, on October 12, 1492, after two months at sea, Columbus and his crew finally clearly spotted land. It's not known where they landed, but we can say for sure that they landed somewhere in the Bahamas. Having landed, they saw trees very green and fruits of diverse kinds. Upon reaching land, Columbus fell to his knees thanked God for a safe voyage, and planted a flag in the ground, claiming the land for Spain, as the Tainos, who had lived there for a thousand years, watched from behind trees and bushes. Shortly after landing, many of the island's inhabitants assembled on the beach. The Tainos gave them food and drink, gifts of parrots, cotton, and other goods. And the Spaniards gave them gifts of red hats and beads. The Taino people had never seen white men before and thought they were gods. Columbus spent the next two months looking for gold. In December of 1492, while they were sailing east of Cuba, three ships under the command of Columbus approached the second largest island in the Caribbean, which they later called La Española. Just when he was about to return to Spain on Christmas Eve, his ship, the Santa Maria, ran aground and sank the Taino chief, Guacanagari, told his people to help the Spanish and retrieve every salvageable item. A problem arose when all the sailors who had accompanied Columbus could not fit on the two remaining and smaller ships. So, a fort was built using the salvaged wood from the Santa Maria, and 39 men were left behind at a fort Columbus called La Navidad. Shortly after, Columbus set sail for Spain, taking some of the natives and birds, foods, and plants to show the king and queen. For the second voyage, Columbus was given a fleet of 17 ships and some soldiers. Upon arrival at La Navidad, Columbus found the fort burned to the ground, and all 39 men he had left behind had been killed. It seems the sailors left behind had misbehaved in the form of rape of the local women and theft of anything they saw that they wanted. One of the local leaders, named Caunabo, had met with the other leaders and, and all but one agreed that gods would never have behaved in the manner that the Spaniards had, and they decided the Spaniards had to go, so they eliminated them and the threat they posed to their people. Columbus vowed to find Caunabo and retaliate. More fortified places were rapidly built, including a city founded on January 2, 1493, and named La Zibella for the queen. From that point on, life as the Taino knew it ended. The Spaniards took revenge for the destruction of the Fort La Navidad and also took slaves. Columbus forced the Tainos to work in the gold mine searching for gold. Those who refused were killed. Each adult over 14 years of age was expected to deliver a hawk's bell full of gold every three months. Or when this was lacking, 25 pounds of spun cotton. If this tribute was not brought, the Spanish cut off the hands of the Taino and left them to bleed to death. Taino women were given to Spaniards to do with whatever they wished. The fields, unattended, 
failed to yield enough food for the Tainos and the Spaniards, whose supplies had run out. All were hungry. Columbus found Calnavo, they tricked him in order to capture him, and he was put on a ship that was sent to Spain and was never heard from again. Many Tainos starved to death, others died from hard labor. Many committed suicide. Epidemics swept the island. They were beaten, tortured, raped, enslaved, and murdered. After 1496, the number of Tainos fell by about 70%. Guacanagari, the chief who befriended Columbus, also died soon. At this point, the Spaniards in La Isabella started a rebellion against Columbus and his brothers. The Spanish king and queen sent a royal investigator to calm the situation. Columbus and his brothers were found guilty for numerous crimes against both the natives and the Spaniards. Columbus and his brothers were arrested and put on a ship to Spain. The Spanish authorities would allow him another voyage across the ocean, but they forbid him to visit La Española. He explored the Caribbean for two years and then returned to Spain, where he died in 1506. Meanwhile, on La Española, the Tainos, who didn't want to work for the Spanish, fled for the hills. The Tainos ruled in a mountain region. Their leader was a woman named Ana Caona. She was the wife of Caonabo, the chief who had led the attack on the Spanish fort years earlier. In 1503, the Spanish governor requested a meeting with her in order to break the resistance. During the meeting of 80 Taino leaders, including Ana Caona, the Spanish governor Nicolás de Ovando ordered the meeting house to be set on fire to burn them alive. Ana Caona was arrested and accused of conspiracy for resisting occupation and executed. Prior to her execution, Ana Caona was offered clemency if she would give herself to one of the Spaniards, which was common in the era. Standing with her fellow Tainos in solidarity, the Taino indigenous female leader chose execution over colluding with her Spanish enemy, her refusal creating her legend. Ana Caona remained rebellious and independent until her violent public death. She was executed by hanging at the age of 29. Another Taino chief, Cotubana Mahuo, was ruling in another area, successfully resisting the Spaniards for a while, until he suffered the same fate as Ana Caona. But there was one Taino who came to be known as the most resilient of all. His name was Enrique. He was also in the meeting when the Spaniards burned 80 Taino leaders. In fact, one of them was his father. Enrique managed to escape. After a Spaniard governor named Venezuela raped his wife, Enrique started a revolt in 1519 with a large number of Tainos from the mountain range. He and his followers started a community in the mountains and set up a scouting network. Enrique instructed his men to fight only in self-defense, to kill Spaniards only in the course of battle, otherwise simply to deprive them of their arms. The Spaniards often attacked them, but the Tainos pushed them off time after time. During one battle, Venezuela himself was captured, but even his life would be spared. Enrique ordered his release. The Tainos were able to continue the rebellion and waged guerrilla warfare on the Spaniards until 1533 because of their better knowledge of the region. As the Spaniards were not able to control the rebellion, Spain's monarch, Charles V, signed a treaty granting the Tainos the rights of freedom and possession. Enrique settled in the mountains with his 4,000 followers, the last members of the Taino culture. By this time, the native population was rapidly declining due to European diseases. At the end of the century, the Taino population was officially reported extinct.